Hello, Longview Point. If you will, take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 16. We finished up Micah last week, and I'm so excited because this is the first Wednesday night that the students are going to be back on campus. And so we're going to have worship in this room tonight. We're also going to open up God's Word and study this passage of Scripture together with the students. And I'm just looking forward to seeing their faces. I love getting to teach to those who are watching us, uh, but I'm really looking forward to having students in the room and getting to experience that time together. One of the questions that I'm asked more than anything is how can I determine God's will for my life? And this is coming from people who are in such a, a good place of wanting to obey the Lord, wanting to be in the center of His will. And, and, and as I'm thinking through the big decisions that so many of us have coming up of, of you know, the upcoming seniors, how they're trying to figure out what school they'll be going to next fall, or I think about the decisions that some of the students are making about who they're dating, or even as they get older, who they're going to marry one day, or I think about even people in our congregation. Some of you that are watching this, you may be wondering about these job offers that you have, opportunities that you may be looking at, and there's these all these big decisions, and we want to be in the center of God's will. We want to know God's will for our life in that. And that's the passage of scripture that we're going to look at today is trying to help us have wisdom. I love the book of Proverbs. I encourage you to read Proverbs each day. There's 31 chapters of it. You could read a chapter a day and there's just so much good godly wisdom for our lives, not just on these big decisions, but also on just any aspect of it, of how to live for the Lord. And so I encourage you to be reading that. But tonight we're going to look at Proverbs 16 verses 1 through 9. And we're just going to look at how that impacts us as we make these decisions to, to live our lives for Christ. So hopefully you're there and we're in Proverbs 16. We'll start in verse one. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. The Lord has made everything for its purpose even the wicked for the day of trouble. Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. By steadfast love and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one turns away from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. And then the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So like most of the Proverbs from chapter 10 to 31, this is a little bit choppy because they're just short, truthful statements that are, are general principles that we can apply to our lives. And, and here we are looking at the wisdom of plans and doing the will of the Lord. As we make decisions, we all want this big, bright sign, don't we? We want the sign that just has an arrow pointing down of go to this school, or we want a sign that you know, is pointing down of marry this person, or we want to know exactly what it is or it, that God has for us. Or maybe we kind of open up our Bibles, find a page, stick our finger down and say, oh, well, these are the signs. And, and that tells us what we're supposed to do as well. But those are not healthy ways to seek after the will of the Lord. That's not the way that he intended us to walk through this life. But instead, we as believers, he's been very clear about what his will is. And that's to be walking and trusting him. To be walking with him and even the most small things and having that impact the big things that we do, the big decisions that we make. He even tells us here in verse 1, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue, the words of our mouth, is from the Lord. Verse 9 is another one that drives us home. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And so as we're looking at how do we determine the will of God, I think that there's an important thing that we have to hold on to first and foremost, and that is that we trust the Lord, that we trust him in his sovereignty and that we trust him in his goodness and that we trust him that he is working even when we don't see it. 
Why is it important to trust him in his sovereignty? Verse 9, like I said, the heart of the man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. You see, there is nothing that we can do that is going to change what God has for our lives. He is sovereign. He knows every part of our future. There, there's no decision that we make that the Lord is sitting there going, oh no, I can't believe they've made that decision. No, He knows the decisions that we made long before we were ever even born. And that should give us this great assurance that, that God knows our steps. That as we are walking this life, as we are taking the path that the life has, has given us and, and we face these options of this school or that school or, or anything else, this job or that job, God knows how you're going to decide. We can have assurance that He knows our past long before we ever walk them. See, that gives me peace. That gives me assurance because I realize that I'm not in control. I have the responsibility of making those choices and, and seeking to be wise in those choices, but yet God knows my steps. There's also assurance that He loves and He cares for us. And, and I think about Him as our Heavenly Father, and I bring this up so much because of the beauty of that picture, how incredible it is that He is the perfect Heavenly Father. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, He talks about how we, being earthly fathers who are evil, you know, our, our goodness is nothing compared to His goodness, and yet we still know to give our kids good gifts. We still know to do what's best for our kids, and yet He says, I'm perfect and holy and so I know even better what a good gift is. Our Heavenly Father cares for us. I think about us as fathers um, and how our kids could want things sometimes. And yet even the, the act of withholding something from our kids can be loving. They may not see that at the time. They may not understand it. But yet we know that we're protecting them or we're doing it for their own good. So even as God tells us no sometimes to things that we're praying for, things that we're asking for, God is telling us no because He cares for us and He loves us. It may be even that you are asking Him and praying for two different things. You have this option here, you have this option there, and you're saying, Lord, I want either one of these two things. But He knows that both of those things are wrong for you and He has something different. And so as a loving Heavenly Father, He tells you no to both of those things and we continue to walk with Him and trust Him and know the heart of the Lord because it's been revealed to us. I also think that not only do we have assurance that He is sovereign and He knows our future, not only do we have assurance that He is good and loving and cares for us, but we also have assurance that He's working even when we don't realize it. He's working in ways that we cannot see because here He is, sovereign over all, like we talked about, and He's working in all these details to, to make our past walk along with Him. We can trust in Him in that. We can be assured of that. How do I know that? I think we see that in Genesis with the story of Joseph. Uh, just an incredible story, but, but Joseph is there and he has this dream and he knows it's a divine vision that one day his brothers are going to bow down to him. So he has this plan in place that he's going to become in authority over his brothers. But look at the path that it takes to get there. Look at how so many things happen along the way and they wouldn't have been according to Joseph's plan and he wouldn't see how God was working in those things, but yet God was moving in incredible ways. So here's Joseph. He has the dream. He tells his brothers about the dream. And then they get angry and jealous and they throw him into a pit. Not only do they throw him into a pit, they sell him into slavery. And then he's in slavery long enough in Potiphar's house to where he becomes the, the second in command of the house. That's not a, a real quick event. That's not something that Potiphar just gives him the trust right away. You have to think about the time that's taking place as Joseph is serving in Potiphar's house. Well, then he gets arrested. He's thrown into a prison. He interprets the dreams there, but he's in prison long enough that they forget about him in prison. The time that takes place from Joseph's dream to the time that he's pulled out of prison and is at the right hand of Pharaoh is not a short amount of time. 
But throughout that entire process, God is working. He's refining Joseph. I think about 1 Thessalonians 4.3 that talks about how God is working for our salvation, how he's, or for our sanctification, how he's called us to holiness. Well, here he is working in Joseph's life, preparing him for the position that he is going to take. And God is guiding his path just like Romans, uh, Proverbs 16.9 says that he is establishing his steps. You see, God is working in ways that we may not even be able to see. But he's wanting us to continue to be faithful, to continue to trust him, to continue to walk with him in everything that we do. And he's told us very clearly what he has for us while we're walking that path. And that is for us to make disciples and to be evangelists and to share the goodness of his salvation and the glory of his name. Scripture is very clear that God longs for all to be saved. And so if you're watching this today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, know that He is calling you to Himself, that He wants you to repent from your sin and ask Him to be your Lord and Savior, that you realize that you have a need for Him, that you can't save yourself, that, that if you want to be in the will of God, that He wants to save you from the penalty of your sin. We spend so much time thinking about this life, but Scripture tells us this life is but a mist, and yet eternity goes on and on and on. And so we want to plan for eternity by having a relationship, a right relationship with the Lord. To know Him, to love Him, to trust Him. And if you are a believer, if you are a follower of Christ, then realize that He is calling you to be an ambassador, a missionary, a representative of Him right here, right now, right where you are. It doesn't matter what these big decisions are that you have coming down the road. No, He wants you to be faithful with the, the gifts that He's given you, with the talents that He's given you, with the situation that He has put you in. See, that's the incredible thing. God is just so creative. He's made every single one of us different. He's given us different interests. He's given us different talents. He's given us different skills. And yet he brings us together as part of his kingdom, part of the body of Christ. And he wants to use us for his kingdom and his glory. He's given us each people around us that he's called us to, to make disciples of, to evangelize, to, to share. And you may not be one to, to stand up in front of a camera and do a Bible study or you're not one to stand in front of a group of people and preach. But yet God has given you a specific gifts, talents, abilities, people and situations. That to be in the center of his will is to be telling them of his salvation, his goodness, his grace and his glory. So to trust the Lord we need to be doing this in everyday circumstances, not just coming to him with big things, but in every single day, every decision that we're making, just be walking with the Lord. Just to have that relationship with him and being obedient to what he's called us to do. See, that's the that's the big picture. That's what he's called us to. That's the, the path that he has for us. And it's clear because it's revealed in his word. Make disciples. Tell others of His glory. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I came across a quote as I was preparing for this that, that simply says, There is no ideal place to serve God except where He has set you down. So be faithful right where you are. Even if you have these future things that are coming up, these future decisions and questions be faithful where you are. So what are some practical steps as we are seeking to make those decisions on how we can live this out? One, we are still called to make plans. You look at verse one, it says, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. We are still called to make plans. 
It's not that we are completely um, not responsible for the decisions that we make. We want to take action steps to help us to achieve the goals that, that God has given us, the desires of our heart that line up with Him as we delight in Him, right? Uh, Psalm 37, 4. So we want to walk with Him and make plans. The way that we do that is to saturate our lives with God's Word and with prayer. We have the revealed will of God right here in our hands. That He tells us exactly what He wants from us. And so if we are facing these big decisions, then our lives need to be marked with just so much more time in God's Word. So often as we are facing those big decisions, we end up getting busy and we end up trying to escape those problems or those decisions. We may spend more time watching TV or more time around people not thinking about it. But yet God has called us to make plans, to be good stewards of, of the opportunities that he has given us. And so don't seek to escape from that, but instead saturate yourself in his word. Our prayer life should be so fervent when we're facing decisions that are going to impact not only our lives, but the lives of people around us. I think about the college years and how so many college students are, are spending their college years rebellious against God. They're choosing to live for themselves, choosing to do whatever it is that they want to do. Um, and it's destructive. But yet during those five to six years, they are making some of the biggest decisions of their lives. They're determining what major they're going to study. They're determining what career they're going to pursue after that. They're determining possibly who they're going to marry. They're determining their financial situation. All these things are, are major decisions that they're going to wake up with every day after that. But they're making it at a time when they're far from living for the Lord and instead are living for themselves. As we make plans, as we seek to live and understand the will of God for our lives individually, that hidden will or that secret will is what they call it. This is the Bible is the revealed will of God. We know exactly what it has to say, but the specific will for our life is either hidden or our secret will. We don't know that, but instead of walking with the Lord as they're making those decisions, so many times we're trying to avoid it. God has called us to make plans for Him. And so we should know that it will never go against what His Word has to say. Like I said, the talents and skills and gifts that we've been given, they're all different. But God is never going to call us to do something that goes against His Word. And so we can trust that, we can know that, and as we saturate our lives with that, then it's going to flow out of our heart, out of our minds, out of our mouths, and it's going to help us to stay on the straight path of living obediently for Him. Another thing that we can do is we can seek godly counsel. As you look over Proverbs chapter 12, just a couple of pages over, uh, chapter 12, verse 15, it says this, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. We want to be people who surround ourselves with others, with that, that cord of three strands, that, that we are listening to what people have to say, that they see maybe a certain gifts in us, a certain skill set in us, and, and they can help direct us in the way that we're supposed to go. And so as we're trying to determine the will of God, yes, we need to trust Him, walk with Him. Yes, we need to make plans and, and evaluate it through the Word of God and, and be obedient to that. But we can also seek godly counsel. Isn't that one of the beautiful things about the church body? People who are older than us who can pour into us, people who are younger than us that can encourage us, people who are all along the different stages of, of the walk and the path with the Lord. And He's done that and He's given us godly counsel that can direct us in the ways that we should go. But the last thing that I would encourage you to do is to take action. We worry so much sometimes about what it is that God has for us, what exact decision we need to go 
just to continue, we talk about the colleges. If you talk about Ole Miss or Mississippi State or Southern Miss or wherever it may be, and we, we end up getting this almost paralysis by analysis. But there comes a point where we have to make a decision, and we need to make that decision after saturating in the Word, after the prayer, and focusing on just walking with the Lord and realizing that in those kind of decisions, how are we going to glorify God with our lives? He's calling us to those places for a purpose. You may not even understand exactly what it is that he has for you there. It may not be that, that you know all that you, need, that, that you think you need to know. But he has a purpose for you. And that's to make disciples. That's to evangelize the lost. That's to love people and point them to him. And so some of these decisions that, that we have to remember, we're not changing God's plans. He will use us in the places that he places us, wherever it be. The goal is always to be in the center of God's will, floating down the river of his will right in the middle. It's not promising safety. It's not promising um, that it's going to be convenient or easy or the, the path of least resistance. But there is something about being in the center of God's will that will give you a peace that transcends understanding, that will give you a peace that no matter what the world throws at you, you're obeying the Lord. And that's what's important. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. As you read that quickly, you, you kind of think maybe it's just a quick prayer and then give the work to the Lord and that's it. But that's not what he's saying here. The writer of Proverbs is saying, give your all. Commit there. The Hebrew word is just to go, to, to colloquialize it, is to go all in, to, to put all your weight onto it. It's not, you know, taking it and just doing one foot. It's not uh, sticking your toes in the water. It is going full on, diving into the deep end, off the diving board, saying, Lord, whatever it is that you have for me, I want to be faithful. I want to obey you. I want to live for you. And so wherever that may be, whatever it may be that you have me doing, I am all in. My yes is on the table and I want to make disciples and be an evangelist for you wherever you put me. Whatever you have me doing, whoever you surround me with, help me to see them with your eyes and care for them the way that you do. So like I said, I encourage you to read Proverbs and understand the beauty of the sovereignty of God, how He is marking our paths, that we can trust Him, and that He's called us to do all kind of a variety of different uh, jobs, a variety of different uh, locations, a variety of so many different things. And He's called us to those places with those gifts, with those talents, for His glory. To share the good news, to abide in Him, trusting Him, and making much of His name. So my point for tonight, in order to know God's will for your life, walk with Him daily and make disciples. I can't wait to see how God is going to use each of us to further His kingdom across the street, and around the world. I always like to end with questions for you just to keep you thinking through things. My questions for tonight. One, what are some of the biggest decisions that you've made in your life? Parents, I know uh, that your students would love to hear about how God walked you through some of those big decisions in your life. Take that time and, and tell them how uh, God has done those things. Number two, have you ever been like Joseph? Were you able to look back and see how God worked and brought you to where you are when you didn't realize it when you're in the midst of it all? It's a long question, but what I'm saying there is maybe you didn't know God was working and yet you got to a certain point and you were able to look back and see that his hand was guiding you the whole time. 
What an incredible opportunity to share of God's faithfulness with the people that are around you. And number three, how is God wanting you to use your gifts, your talents, or even the situations, the the circumstances, the people that you're around for His glory? So I hope that this has encouraged you as you make decisions in your life from the biggest decisions to the everyday, daily decisions that you make. Let it all be for God's glory and let's look for ways to make disciples. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your revealed truth and that we can trust you as the one who is sovereign, reigning over all, but yet still good and loving and caring. So Lord, help us just to trust in you more. As we go about our days, help us to look for ways to make disciples, for opportunities to share the gospel, for chances to just be obedient, to trust you and to just walk with you, Lord. You are so good. And as we worship you, we realize you deserve our lives and our all. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen.